We have three powerful readings today. The reading from Jeremiah the lat says the Lord, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. This is incredible. He knew each one of us by name and each hair on our head before he even created the universe. This has profound implications. First, from a public standpoint, this month, the Catholic governor of New York signed legislation allowing the killing of the unborn up to the moment of birth. It is based solely on the mother's health without equal rights to life for the baby. In the midterm elections in Texas, one of the candidates had previously voted against the banning of using our tax dollars for abortions. This is not just about killing the unborn, but also about forcing all of us to pay for that killing, thus making us accomplices. Second, from a personal standpoint, God's words are palpable. I come from a family of four boys. The youngest was stillborn. We treated him as family. He continues to live in our hearts. I will never forget the look in my father's eyes when he told us he saw the baby and he took him to the cemetery in a small casket next to him on the front seat of the car. For over 10 years, I worked in a building that also housed an abortion clinic. Every day in the elevator, I saw the looks on the women that entered and left. They are generally young, scared, which is borne out by published statistics. I will never forget each of their faces. I can honestly say not one of them out of the hundreds that I saw were smiling on the way in or out. Today's wonderful second reading describes love so vividly that it is often used at weddings. This was the reading that was read uh, first. It says in part, love is patient, love is kind. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing. One day, when I entered my building, my office building, I stepped in a chemical puddle. Pro-life protesters had left in the doorway invisible, foul-smelling chemicals that stuck to my shoes. I had to throw them away when I got home in order to not contaminate my house. This was wrong. In the reading, it says we must show love and reach out to these frightened women, often just children themselves. We must not condemn them, but show compassion. Compassion must be extended to both the mother and the father who conceived the baby. Then. Today's gospel stuns us. Here Jesus reads from a 4,500-year-old prophecy of the coming of the Messiah with reference to himself. Quote, he says, today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. He speaks truth, but because he is local, he suffers from the so-called Nazareth syndrome. They reject him and want to kill him. We must speak truth about the subject of abortion regardless of rejection. Worldwide, over 42 million are killed in womb every year, the majority of whom are female. Science knows the unborn feel pain at an early stage of pregnancy. To sustain a culture, there must be a minimum fertility rate of 2.1 babies per woman. The Western world is well below that number. Hence the culture will literally annihilate itself. About a quarter of abortions are committed by Catholics. The late Roe in Roe v. Wade converted to Catholicism and spoke out against abortion. The millennia-old Hippocratic Oath sworn to by doctors promises, I will not give to a woman an abortive remedy. 
Being a conscientious objector in war is legal, but in abortion it is illegal in some courts. In war, the enemy is the aggressor. In abortion, it is the unborn. These truths can be harsh for someone who has experienced abortion. So we must continually return to today's reading, which says, if I comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, but do not have love, I am nothing. So we should follow the U.S. Bishop's request to encourage elected officials to keep taxpayer abortion funding out of health care and to protect the fundamental right of conscientious objection. We should support the Gabriel Project here at our parish. It confidentially and non-judgmentally supports expectant mothers. It originated at St. Michael here and is now worldwide. Due to the brave advocacy of one mother from Guatemala, the Gabriel Project is now there. This is not about preaching politics, but about respecting human life. Remember how the church was falsely criticized for not speaking out against the Holocaust. During January, the Gabriel Project here at our parish raised money, symbolically in baby bottles. As St. Pope John Paul II said, to claim the right to abortion, infanticide, and euthanasia, and to recognize that right in law, means to attribute to human freedom a perverse and evil significance, that of absolute power over others and against others. This is the death of true freedom.